on the line with us our old friend Senator Bernie Sanders, the uh, U.S. Senator from Vermont, sanders.senate.gov, send, send, send Sanders on Twitter. Senator, welcome back to the program. Great to be with you, Tom, and happy holidays to you and all of your listeners. Well, thank you, and happy holidays to you and your family, too, Bernie. I, I, in fact, I just bought a, a pair of uh, Bernie mittens for Louise. <laughs> Her hands are getting cold. And I, <laughs> they're identical to those famous mittens that you were wearing. She was like, I, if you're going to get me mittens, I want Bernie mittens. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I, the, I, I'm, I understand you have a new position as chair of the Senate's Help Committee. I don't know much about that, and uh, and I'm also uh, curious to your thoughts on you know what's going on right now in our country and and in the Senate. Good. Well, the uh, Help Committee is an abbreviation for Health, Education, Labor, and Pension. So that covers a lot of territory that impacts the lives of of millions and millions of Americans. And I think we're going to take a kind of two-pronged approach. Uh, on one hand, we want to analyze the problems that exist and come up with real solutions. On the other hand, we want to be realistic and understand that with Republican control over the House and with a number of conservative Democrats, we're not going to get done what needs to be done. Therefore, we've got to do the best that we can. So it's kind of a two-pronged attack uh, that we'll initiate. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, health care, well, I think we all know what the problems are and that we have a dysfunctional health care system. Other than that, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, and that <laughs> means uh, we are spending, and, and people don't know this really, we're spending twice as much per capita on health care as the people of any other nation. We're now spending, Tom, $13,000 for every man, woman, and child. Wow. Can you believe that? $13,000. Wow. That's, you know, 52000 for a family of four. Meanwhile, despite spending double what other countries are spending, you've got 85 million who are uninsured or underinsured. Uh, we have about 60,000 people who tragically die every single year because they don't get to a doctor on time. Uh, we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, and something like one out of four Americans can't afford to fill the prescriptions their doctors write. And on top of all that, we don't have enough doctors. We're looking at a massive doctor shortage, mm. massive nursing shortage. Yep. We don't have enough dentists. We don't have enough mental health care uh, providers. Uh, so other than that, the system is doing really well. But I should say, for all of the listeners who have heavy-duty stock in the insurance companies and the drug companies, they are doing very well, which I guess is what the function of our health care system is supposed to be about, making the rich richer. So that whole area of how you provide health care to all people, lower the cost of health care, uh, take on the pharmaceutical industry to lower the cost of prescription drugs, make sure the people in America are not dying because they don't get to a doctor on time by expanding primary health care access. All of those things are stuff that we're going to be looking at. I caught a story uh, a couple of days ago that you have a new book coming out. Is that the case? I do. Tell I me do. about it. I do. Be out, be out in mid-February, I think. Um, and it's called, It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism. And, and essentially... It deals with issues that I think very few people uh, in American public life are dealing with, and that is uh, the reality is that in America today we are moving rapidly toward an oligarchic form of society. So in terms of income and wealth inequality, it's worse now than it has been in 100 years. Uh, billionaires are doing probably – the upper 1 percent are probably doing better today in America than the upper 1% have ever done. Uh, the percentage of the wealth they own is extremely high, growing higher. Meanwhile, the middle class continues to shrink. And it's just an astounding reality that today, Tom, despite the huge explosion in technology we have seen over the last 100 years, the average worker, in terms of inflation-adjusted uh, wages, is earning less than he or she did close to 50 years ago. Can you imagine that? It's 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 truly astonishing, and and uh, and and the top one percent, of course, are making massively more than they were fifty years ago. Right, right. So there's been a truly multi multi trillion dollar transfer of wealth from working families in the middle class to the top one percent. Now, who talks about it? it Nobody. Was, it's fifty trillion, according to the Rand Corporation. You know, they do That's an right. analysis. That's it's right. Fifty trillion dollars. I mean, who could imagine what that is? But bottom line is, if you're in the middle class now. Uh, you're probably doing worse off. You know, when we were kids, and I'm older than you are, the expectation was there was one 
breadwinner in the family could earn enough money to take care of the family. Yeah. That, in those days, it was men. But how many families do you know, middle class, working class families, where one person can pay the bill, one person's income pay the bills? Almost non existent. So, so you got that reality. Then you got another economic reality. And that is there's probably more concentration of ownership in American society today uh, than we have ever seen. So whether it is in media, whether it is on Wall Street, uh, whether it is in the food industry, uh, whether it is in transportation, you got a handful of large corporations controlling what goes on in sector after sector. And then on top of all of that, you got three Wall Street firms, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, who control assets of over twenty trillion dollars, the equivalent of the GDP of the United States, and are the major stockholders in ninety five percent of the S and P five hundred. Wow. Can you believe that? Wow, no, I mean, it's I an did, unbelievable I power. So you look at that, you find if you, you took a few thousand of these people, you know, Wall Street guys and the other media models, you put them into a room, they have virtually all of the power. Uh, in terms of the economic life of the country. Then you look at politically what's going on, and I know you discuss this a lot, uh, as a result of Citizens United and other decisions, you have billionaires buying and selling politicians. Yep. So if you add, you know, can, you know, if you're a billionaire now, you don't like Bernie Sanders, you can put $100 million, start a super PAC, put $100 million to defeat him, and you might be able to do it. So if you look at income and wealth inequality, who's doing well, rich are doing well, you look at concentration of ownership. You have record-breaking corporate profits and incredible concentration of ownership. Uh, and then if you look at the political process that maintains all of this stuff, billionaires are buying elections. Add all of that stuff up together. What do you got? You know, got oligarchy. And it's true in the United States, and more or less it's true all over the world. Yeah. You know, you look at our, uh, the people who run Saudi Arabia and their alliances with Russia. The, you know, the Saudi family is worth $1.4 trillion dollars. One family, one point four trillion, working with the Russian oligarchs, working with, you know, billionaires all over the world. So you have a world economy that, you know, is really controlled by relatively small numbers of people. So that's kind of the the theme of what the book is about. Now when I when I bring these issues up and i as you know, I frequently do, in fact I've written several books about them, the, the hidden yep, history of American yeah. oligarchy, for example, and then there's the uh, you know Rebooting the American Dream that you were kind enough to write a cover letter for and send to all your 99 colleagues in the Senate. Um, it, the, invariably, somebody will call and say, yeah, yeah, capitalism sucks. We need to just get rid of it and do what Cuba did or do what the old Soviet right. Union did and bring back communism. Right. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Capitalism can be regulated and can function. Uh, it's called right. democratic socialism, if you want to call it. Or, or you know, right. I mean, other countries have figured this out. We have figured this out. We had figured this out between 1933 and 1981. Um, it, 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 we, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, uh, can right. you speak I mean, to that if you agree with that or disagree with sure, me? Sure, I do. Wish? I mean, nobody in their right mind thinks the government should be owning everything. That's totally crazy. No one believes in that. Yeah. But you have models out there that we can build upon. I mean, you got Scandinavian countries. I had the, um, you know, we, we had the ambassador of Finland coming to, to Vermont. We've had the ambassador from Denmark in the past coming to Vermont. People don't know this. In those countries, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, health care is virtually free, as it is in Canada. You know, you spend weeks in the, ho in the hospital if you have to. You come out at most, you're going to pay a few hundred bucks. You go to the doctor. You don't have to take out your wallet. Health care is a human right that exists in many countries around the world. Many countries right now are making sure that their young people can get a higher education uh, tuition free because they understand they want to grow the intellectual potential of their population. You have child care systems which are inexpensive and high quality countries uh, like uh, Finland. Uh, you have you know investments in public education to make sure the kids leave school with a wonderful education. Some of them may want to go to higher education. Some of them may want to go to trade school to get a vocational uh, certificate, which will enable them to be an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, uh, folks who we desperately need right now are making very, very good incomes. So many of the ideas that we talk about, whether it's health care, whether it's uh, education, whether it's tax reform, demanding that the wealthy start paying their fair share of taxes, does anybody in their right mind think that it makes sense that three people own more wealth than the bottom half of American society. 
that you got billionaires there who pay an effective tax rate lower than a, a fireman or a, a nurse. No one thinks that makes sense. That's a rigged system. So, you know, we can learn, we can learn from other countries, and we can do it our own way. But the bottom line is you need an economy, you need a government that works for all people and not just the billionaire class, which is more or less what you got right now. In the in the two minutes or so we have left, I'm, I'm curious your take on how we make those kinds of changes. In 1929, of course, you had the great crash um, brought about by Harding's deregulation of the economy and lowering of taxes and, and uh, the Republican Great Depression, and that, you know, opened a gap for FDR to come in with a new deal. Um, in 1980, you had this hyperinflation and, and the, the kind of sagging economy as a result of the Arab oil embargo that gave Reagan a, a crisis that he could use to impose neoliberalism on the country, which we've been suffering under for 40 years. Um, it seems like it takes a crisis for a country to really make a major change. What's it going to take for us to get... You well, know, you know uh, what... Uh, I, I was very proud. I worked very hard, and I know it doesn't get much attention. The uh, American Rescue Plan, mm -hmm. which we initiated in the early part of the Biden administration, which went a long way. You know, it's the plan that provided $1,400 for uh, every working class Americans, um, saved hospitals from going under, extended unemployment, and so forth. What we need to do is to be thinking big. And, and you know, you know, Tom, you know, thank God we're not in the midst of a major depression now as we were in the 30s. But we got 60 percent of our people living paycheck to paycheck in the richest country on earth. You think that's a crisis? I do. You got old people who can't afford to retire. I think that's a crisis. You got 85 million people uninsured or underinsured. That's a crisis. You got half a million people who are homeless in America. That's a crisis. You got 45 million people with student debt. I think that's a crisis. So I think what we have to do is do what the corporate media does not do and say, you know what, that's not what America should be all about. And I think ordinary folks will, will say, yeah, you're right. Let's move in a, in a new direction. Yeah. Amen. Well, uh, Bernie, thank God you're out there and, and you're fighting the good fight and you're, you're doing that work every, every single day. Um, I'm looking forward to your new, new book, It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism, and congratulations on uh, being the incoming chair of the HELP Committee. Uh, Senator, thank okay, you so well, much. Well, Tom, you keep up. Look, your voice and the voice of progressive, independent journalists and commentators is desperately needed. So keep up the great work. Thank you, sir.